Hi, this is Toby at Cuddle, and in this video I'm going to show the techniques in Cuddle that I used for creating this coaster design. And some of those techniques that I'll be covering in the video are a bunch of the modifiers, so we're using the mirror repeat, rotational repeat, and transform repeat. Also the merge paths modifier and the boolean flatten modifier. And then also some additional techniques will be changing the stroke settings, do a little bit of parameters, and we'll use the convert to path feature. So before we start making the design and cuddle, I wanted to explain uh, just the layers in this coaster. So there are three layers, and the top layer is cut from maple veneer. Um, and then that's... Um, glued onto a base of walnut plywood. And the walnut plywood also below it, it's hard to see but in this photo, but there's uh, a layer of adhesive felt. And the maple veneer has the very intricate cut pattern, and then the plywood base and the felt are cut from uh, just sort of the outline of that intricate cut pattern. So here we are in Cuddle, and I'm going to show how I created that design. So first I started with a reference circle. So I had measured an existing coaster that I had and discovered that it was about four inches in diameter. So I'm just going to make a reference circle. I typed four into the scale. Um, I'll call that reference circle. I double clicked on the name to rename it. And now I'm going to create the leaf, which is going to be sort of the motif that gets repeated for, for this. So I'm going to use the pen tool, and I'm just going to draw sort of a shape like that. So it's just two anchor points. It's really a simple curve but then we'll use these modifiers to elaborate it. So first we'll do a mirror repeat. And so mirror repeat by default will mirror along the vertical axis. Uh, so then we get this bilateral symmetry. And then I'll stack on top of that a rotational repeat, which gives me multiple copies. And I can change the number of repetitions. Um, and then I want to bring these endpoints together, and I'll use merge paths for that. So merge paths will bring together any endpoints that are close. It will also merge together any endpoints that are meeting. So there were two paths here from the mirror repeat, and this dot shows that they're being merged there. Um, and Merge paths has this connect distance parameter that if it's um, too small, it won't merge these. So it'll only merge open endpoints that are within this distance. So it needs to be like a quarter inch or something. So um, there's a whole video about merge paths that I'll put a link in the description to. All right, so we have that. Um, I'm going to hide the reference circle since I know that um, now I know sort of what my size is going to be. Um, and now I'm going to give this um, a non hairline stroke. So by default, all strokes are hairline, which is like very thin. Um, so I'll uncheck that so that I can change the um, width of the stroke line. And I'm also going to give this a white fill. Um, and we'll need this because when we do the transform repeat, they're going to uh, stack on top of each other. Um, and I, I'll just point out that you know I, we can always go back and double click on this um, path and change it around. So when I'm tweaking, I'll usually turn off geometry snapping. Um, so we can, you know, change how this, um, how the curves look. And so when I actually created this, this file, I did quite a lot of tweaking. 
so say we have something like that. Now to create the fractal pattern, we'll use the transform repeat modifier. And so by default, it's moving the position on each iteration by one to the right in the x direction. So I'm just going to set that to zero because I don't want to be moving it. I only want to be scaling it. So I can change the scale here. And since I want to be scaling both of these at the same time, the trick is that you can just type in a number there, and then you get this uniform scale. So you can control it all from one number. I think the stroke width is a little heavy, so I'm going to turn that down a bit. Um, and then I also want to rotate each iteration. And I want to rotate it, um, you know, it looks like this is about the right number. Um, the way that we can determine this mathematically is we can look at the rotational repeat has 12 repetitions. So that means that this rotation amount needs to be 360 divided by 12 and then divided by 2. So 360 divided by 12 would get you from here to here. Um, and then we only want to go half that distance. So we divide by 2. And so we get this uh, 15 for that value. And so I'll just change the scale factor and the number of repetitions, sort of get uh, the design that I'm going for. Go in and change the stroke width again. Can always go in and change the actual path that I'm starting from. Something else that I experimented a lot with was um, I wasn't sure how many rotations I wanted because you can play with different amounts. Um, but when I change this number, you'll notice that the transform repeat doesn't change. So the transform repeat, this rotation, this expression had a 12 in it because we wanted that to correspond to 12 repetitions of the rotational repeat. But if we want to be changing this number, we also want to change this number at the same time. And we can do that using a parameter. So if I make a new parameter, and I'll call it rotations, um, I'll set it to something like 12. Then for repetitions here, we can just write in rotations. And now, as I change this value here, this value, which is referring to rotations, will likewise change. And in the transform repeat, I can take this and type in rotations. And now, as I change the this value, both my rotational repeat changes and my transform repeat changes. So that's how you can use parameters to control uh, multiple aspects of your design. Um, so I'll just play with this a little bit more. Um, another thing that I did in this design is um, I used the scale stroke parameter. So scale will scale the geometry, but you'll notice that the stroke width stays the same for each iteration. If I change the scale stroke, I can make each iteration the stroke width be scaled by some factor. Uh, and I think it's sort of nice that you can change both the scale and the scale stroke independently to um, you know, create the effect that you're going for. So something like that. And I wanted this to be filled in. So I'm just going to bring a circle. My snapping is off, so I'll snap it to the center there. 
it's not going to have a stroke, but it'll just be filled black. I want it to be smaller. Um, if I hold Command and Shift, then it will um, it will scale with respect to the um, Command will make it Command or Control on Windows will make it scale with respect to the center, and Shift will keep it uniform. Um, could also scale it uh, in the inspector. So I just want to cover up uh, that part in here just to give it sort of a center. You know, once, once, um, once you get this small, the laser is not going to be able to really cut out something that small. And so um, there's some limit to it. We can't just go into infinity here. So once I have this pattern, then the next thing that I want to do is I want to get the, the cut path for that. So, you know, this, this consists of a bunch of things with strokes, um, black strokes and white fills. Um, a black fill, but I really I, I want the cut path for cutting out this pattern. And to do that, we use the Boolean flatten modifier. And the idea of Boolean flatten is it basically takes whatever you see on the screen of both black and white, and where white is the default background color, um, and it just creates the cut path for that. And if you click the stroke result, uh, parameter, then you can see this is the the cut path that's being generated, um, which is exactly what we want to send to our laser cutter. Another thing that I'll point out here is that at this point, um, Cuddle sort of starts going a little bit slow. And the reason for that is that this is pretty complicated geometry and Boolean flatten is a pretty intense operation. And we're working on making Cuddle faster. Um, but in the meantime, something that I like to do if performance starts becoming a problem is I'll just uncheck um, whatever the expensive operation is. So in this case, the Boolean flatten. So I'll, I'll uncheck Boolean flatten while I'm you know, tweaking this design, like if I wanted to, um, you know, be be playing with this, you probably don't want to be doing it while while Boolean flatten is is on. And then when you like it, you can turn Boolean flatten back on, and then export this uh, for your laser. The only other thing that I did for this design is you'll recall that I need both the intricate pattern for the top layer, but also the outline of the pattern for the base and the adhesive felt layer. And to do that, what I'm going to do is I'm going to use uh, convert to paths, which takes something and gets rid of all the complexity and just turns it into primitives. Um, so if I say edit convert to paths, that will just turn this into a compound path. Um, a compound path is just a thing consisting of a bunch of individual paths. And I can then go ahead and you know make any kinds of edits I want to this. Um, sort of lets you edit it raw. The downside is that you lose all of your modifiers and things like that. So um, it's a, this is a destructive operation, convert to paths. So um, often what I'll do is, um, so I just pressed undo until I got back to this state. Often what I'll do is I'll um, like make a new component and bring out the the old one, convert that one to paths. And now I can do all those operations while I still have my original 
which I'm going to turn off Boolean flattened to make it run faster. So I still have my original, um, but then this one that I've converted to a compound path, I can then go in and, uh, you know, make all those edits like I just showed. And in particular, the edit that I want to do is I want to take this path and I want to pull it out of the compound path. So I'm just going to drag it out in the outline. And then I'm able to assign it its own stroke color. So I'll say assign it a red stroke. And now I have this. And then this is exactly what I need for the laser cutter because now I can cut out the outline and I can also cut out the intricate pattern. And furthermore, at least with the Glowforge, um, by putting your outer cut and the inner cuts as separate colors, you can schedule them. So I can make the Glowforge cut out these, um, these inner small holes first before it cuts out the outer one. And that's a little bit better just for making sure things align. So that's the, those are the techniques that I used for designing this coaster. I hope this video was helpful. Uh, thanks for watching.